getting started with vbots 2025a on mac hey everyone my name is kajal i'm a robotics software engineer and an entrepreneur on this channel you will find tutorials related to robotics as well as interview with people in the industry sharing their experiences along with some tips and tricks from me in today's video we will learn how to install vbots r2025a on mac and learn some basics to help you get started with vbots so without further ado let's get into it as you can see i'm already on the cyberbotic website which has created vbots you can also simply go to google and type vbots you will see the cyberbotics website pop up the home page is very good at detecting your operating system and it's automatically giving me the option for mac os alternatively you can also click on this arrow which will help you look at the vbots option for different operating systems i'm going to go with mac i'm simply going to click download and it's going to get started i'm using safari so up top here you can see where it downloads Next up I'm going to click on the DMG file. As you can see it's going to give me an error that it cannot verify. Let's look into how to resolve that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to system settings. Next you're going to go on privacy and setting here on the left side and then scroll down. If you've tried to open it will automatically show that you tried to open it. I'm going to go ahead and click open anyway. Do this at your own risk. All right, next up and this is pretty straightforward for most Mac installation. You simply click it and drag it to applications. Next up, I'm going to once again click on command and space bar and then type in vbots. If for some reason you get the error again that vbots cannot be open, just go into your system settings, privacy and security and click open anyway. Now I personally prefer the dark theme so I'm going to go for night mode but you can choose your own theme and then go ahead and click start vbots with selected theme. Now I am getting some error warnings because I'm using a Mac. We'll see how it ends up working out. I'm going to click close vbots guided tour. Let's give it a try. It's going to walk you through this scene of an uneven terrain. You can also look into some specific devices. In this case, it's an example for a GPS. I'm going to go ahead and close it. So now, as you would have seen, I just clicked pause on the top menu bar in VBOTS. This is, as you can predict, to start and pause the simulation. So it's actually play and pause simulation. Okay, let me first walk you through some of the basic aspects of VBOTS to help you familiarize with this simulation software. So up top, you've got your toolbar. The very first option lets you expand and contract the scene tree. We will go into it a little bit later. Next up is the plus sign. This will help you add new objects, nodes, new robots or anything that you want to add to your world. Now, when I say world, this is what it means. In VBOTS, everything you do is adding and removing objects into the world, playing the simulation in the world. This is for restoring your viewpoint. So in general, let in your world, let's say you click at it and you move it, you can change your viewpoint, top view, so on and so forth. And let's say you mess it up, you can just click this and it will restore it to the previous saved version. These are some common predetermined viewpoints. I personally prefer top view a lot of times when I'm making a lot of changes. It's good to know and it also makes it slightly easier than having to move it yourself. Next up, open existing worlds. So this will not only let you open up all the example worlds that Cyberbotics has created for VBOTS simulation, but this also allows you to open up your own worlds. 
that you have created in vbots and saved next up is reload world now when it does reload it will go back to the last saved version so let's say you add an object and then you do reload it might not bring the ba object back unless you saved it this is also helpful sometimes when you run into errors maybe you messed something up maybe you ran the simulation a couple of times this is a good way to just reload and reset up here we've got time and this is going to be simulation time Time. when you run a simulation this will show as the clock move forward so I'm going to show you an example and as you can see it's moving and the timing may seem a bit off because it's again simulated time now this icon here is for reset simulation now if I want to go back to the start of my simulation I want to reset it this is my icon I simply click on it and it's going to reset the simulation and it's going to place the robot or any moving objects that you have back to the initial position that you specified when you created this vbots world same goes for any objects for example if you have a hanging object that you drop during your simulation it's going to go back to that initial position if you have any speed settings any sensor settings this is basically going to take your vbots code back to its initial phase and then you can start the simulation again as I mentioned before this play icon lets you play and pause your simulation now another cool feature in vbots is that it lets you step through simulation and that you can do with this icon it's exactly one simulation step so generally this can be a for loop that you have going it's gonna just go through the loop one at a time in this example I'm guessing somewhere here in the code there's a loop that it's going to okay here so we've got a while loop going my guess is it's going to simulate through this one step at a time this can be helpful when you're in a tricky position and you're just trying to work through your code this on the other hand will run things as fast as possible so as you can see this is running at 3x crazy speed this can be helpful if you're trying to figure something out and just going to speed through and then go back and go step by step and then be like okay things look good let me run through oh now I want to see what it's going to do in this corner I'm going to start playing again oh I'm going to pause it's turning I want to see step by step how it's turning so on and so forth now this in this simulation right here you are actually visualizing things as they are happening if you just want to run through code and maybe print some results this can also be helpful when you have a very heavy code running and you just want to get results fast and it might not be simulating very well especially if you have an older device then at that time you can choose not to render the visualization and this is the icon that's going to help you do that so when I do this it's going to not do the video version or the visual version which is rendering but it's still running the vbot simulation in the background and you can just turn it on back this one is to take a screenshot this is to take a video recording of your simulation this is to share your simulation and this is for volume to be honest I have not done any simulation with voices I don't know how it's gonna sound like but maybe you could give it a try now you might have seen me mention before about the code and this is your code editor so the robot is running a code and I'm gonna show you how we mentioned the code that it's gonna run you can also end up having multiple robots and then you can again specify which code is being run by those robots you can hide this code view or you can bring it back tools and text editor now as you can see in here this code is in C and if you've ever coded in C or C++ you know you have to build your code before being able to run and that's what's gonna happen here if you're running a code in Python you can go ahead and run it you don't need to build I'm also gonna quickly go over the other menu options so you've got file where you can open world you can also go through some sample worlds save world all these options are also available in this toolbar next up is edit this is great for cut copy paste with the text editor which you can also use your keyboard shortcuts for next up you've got view again you will see that some of these options such as restore viewpoint rendering change view were available in the main toolbar a good one to look at here is optional rendering this is great for when you're adding sensors and you want to see them 
So for example, let's say you end up adding a LiDAR and you want to see those LiDAR rays. This is how you go about it. And as you can see, there's a ray path option as well as a point cloud option. When I'm using VBOTS, one of the things I like to do is click on show coordinate system and it creates this little coordinate system here called XYZ. This is helpful when you're building your world and you want certain things to be in certain direction. Next up simulation. Again, you've got pause, play, step, fast. All of these are also available here. I already went into the build. And in the end, you've also got the help section. You can look into it quickly. You can also just Google some of these problems. I would recommend looking into the VBOTS channel that's on Discord. If you're stuck sometimes, that's a great way to ask for help. I'll try to link it in the description below. Now let's look at another aspect in VBOTS, which is the scene tree. So some of the basic things when you start a new world is going to be world info and viewpoint. Viewpoint is basically how you are seeing this rendering or this visualization from your viewpoint. Textures, background, light. This is to add light and be able to see things. Rectangle arena is this your base. And in most cases, when you're doing a simulation, you will start with an arena. Basically, this is ground. So when you keep objects, that's where they stay. If you have a hanging object, as long as it's above the rectangular arena, it will drop into the arena and move around. Now comes the important part. That's the solid objects that you're adding to your world. I will go more over into different kinds of objects that you can create. The plus icon is how you create these objects. They're also called nodes and you can also have multiple nodes within themselves. So for example, you could have a cube and then you can attach another cube to it and you can combine them into one object. And that's where the tree aspect of the scene tree comes in. And you will add those objects into this children aspect of your main object. Now, as you can see, there are some things like translation, rotation. This is how you place your object in the world. So for example, I'm going to change the Y coordinate, which is going to move in this way to 0 0.01. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm making the changes here. And you can see the green object move in the Y direction. This is what I meant when I said showing the coordinate system in VBOTS can be helpful when you're trying to move objects around. Now, this is one way of moving object. You can also just do it directly in the world. So I'm going to select this object. I'm going to click on the green icon and I'm moving it. And there you go. I messed up the viewpoint. And this is where that reset viewpoint is really helpful. Coming back to our scene tree, you can see you can even name it, which can be helpful as you have more options objects. All right, next, we're going to look at our robots. As soon as I click on the GPS robot, it highlighted the robot in our simulation world. Now, when we go into the details, we can see similar to the other VBOT node, we have the translation and rotation option. Now, the important part that I want you to see here, if you scroll down is controller. This is how you specify what code your robot is going to use. If you look at the bottom here, there's an option called select. This will help you go through all of your code options and select the one you want this robot to use. Code is also called controller in VBOTS. Another thing that you will see here is edit. When you click on it, it's going to open up the code in this code editor. In this case, I already had it open. But let's say if I went into another code, I come back here and I click edit. You can see it switched back to this code. Here you can modify the code and make sure to hit save to save your changes and then run the simulation with the new code. In this video, I went over a brief overview of how to use VBOTS 2025A on a Mac. In the next video, we will build our own VBOT simulation. So make sure to subscribe. I will link that video here as well as in the description below along with all the other information I spoke about. Once again, my name is Kajal and if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.